Hello everyone, this is Dennis, and you are on the Den Electro channel. I'm sure everyone has had cases in their lives when during intensive work you often use a multimeter. You then take it, then put it off, leaving it on for a long time, as a result of which the battery quickly runs out. I got tired of going to the store every time for a new battery, so I decided to put a lithium-ion battery in the multimeter. In addition, so that the mechanism that switches operations does not wear out, I decided to add a button to turn on and off the multimeter. Well, the highlight of the display will be the cherry on the cake. Now I will show you how to implement all this. To upgrade your multimeter, you will need the following parts. Any lithium ion battery with a voltage of 3.7 volts. In my case, the capacity is 1100 milliamp hours. It is equipped with a special board that protects it from a full charge, from a short circuit and from overcharging. Here you can, of course, use batteries without protection but if it is completely discharged, this can affect its health. You will also need a USB controller to charge lithium ion batteries. Next comes a low power DC-DC boost converter. Two miniature buttons with fixation. I took them from the front panel of an old car radio. Next comes a white 5mm LED and a 120 ohm resistor. You will also need two capacitors, one nonpolar at 10 nanofarads and the other polar at 10 microfarads. There is also a small addition in the form of two 3mm LEDs with any color. And two resistors, each of 3.9 kilo ohms. All parts are assembled according to such a simple scheme. A lithium ion battery is connected to the output of the charge controller, plus to plus, minus to minus. The remaining elements of the circuit are connected through the buttons SB1 and SB2. When I press the SB1 button, the signal LED LED1 lights up. This is a 3mm LED connected through a 3.9 kilo ohm resistor. Then it will go through a boost converter. At its output, there will be 9 volts, which will power the multimeter. Parallel to the output of the converter, two capacitors C1 and C2 must be soldered. It is advisable to solder them closer to the multimeter right on the raft, in the place where the crown was connected. When I press the SB2 button, the LED2 signal LED lights up. This is the same 3mm LED as LED1. It is also turned on through a resistance of 3.9 kilo ohms. Along with it, a 5mm LED LED3 will light up. It is connected through 120 ohm resistors and is the backlight of the display. When all the details are available, you can begin the transformation of the multimeter. Using a Phillips screwdriver, unscrew the two screws and remove the cover. Inside the parts, there is a little display, a board, a battery, and there is still plenty of room for new parts. Before installing everything inside, you need to adjust the output voltage on the converter. 4.1 volts is supplied to the input of the converter from the battery. 
This converter is a boost converter, so it cannot output below the input voltage but only above it. I turn a small regulator with a screwdriver and achieve a voltage of 9 volts. Next, we measure the current consumed from the battery, even if the multimeter is turned off. The converter consumes 280 microamperes. According to the measurement of alternating current, almost 2 milliamps. And when the diodes ring, 9 milliamps. If the probes are closed, then the consumption increases to 12 milliamps. When measuring resistors up to 200 ohms, it consumes 8.2 milliamps, and when closed, 13. At 2000 kilo ohms, the consumption is 2.3 milliamps, and when closed, nothing changes. On direct, as well as on alternating current, the consumption is 1.93 milliamps. Now it is easy to calculate how long the battery will last if the tester constantly works in some mode. To do this, the current consumed by the multimeter must be divided by the battery capacity. If you leave the tester in AC and DC current measurement mode, it will work without recharging for 572 hours. and in the mode of continuity of diodes and resistors 122 hours. I decided to install a lithium ion battery on the back cover between these three posts. True, there are small stiffeners here that interfere, so they must be dismantled. Then I decided not to break everything off but to remove only the halves and get such convenient latches. For reliability, I also glue double-sided tape on the bottom. Now the battery has nowhere to go. On the front half of the multimeter, in the lower left corner, I made two holes for the buttons. And on top, I made a hole for micro USB. In order for the board to be tightly inserted into the corner, it was necessary to grind off the upper left corner of it. By the way, this board also has two signal LEDs. They are very small, one signals the battery charge, and the other about the end of the charge. According to my idea, their light will illuminate the right side of the display. Here's what it looks like. When I turn on the power, the blue LED lights up to indicate that the battery is fully charged. When the battery is charging, the red LED will be on, which is now flashing. Then I removed the colored caps from the buttons that remained after the car radio. and soldered thin flexible wires to 3mm LEDs. Then he took a board for homemade products, installed buttons there, and put LEDs on them. They are attached with glue. I also had to heat the legs of the LEDs so that they melted the plastic and put on the buttons more freely. From the bottom, I soldered two 3.9 kilo ohm resistors. 
Keep in mind that thick wires cannot be used here, as they will interfere with pressing the buttons, or even break off during operation. The boost converter will be located on the front cover of the tester. And it will be closed by a fee. The board must be installed in such a way that the LEDs do not stick out much, but at the same time they can be pressed. So that nothing closes the converter anywhere, I will put it in a cardboard box. Then you need to solder the wires to the converter, put it in boxes and stick it on double-sided tape to the multimeter case. I also glue the board on the boxes with double-sided tape. Then I insert the board for charging the battery and fix it with hot glue. Then I insert a small piece of cardboard between the two boards so that the top board rests more securely against the bottom one and glue it with tape. Then in the right corner I settle the white LED and the resistor. Lay a piece of foil on top. This will be the reflector that will illuminate the display. To prevent the foil from falling off, I stick adhesive tape. Then we connect everything with wires according to the diagram. The wires from the output of the converter are connected to the multimeter board. There I also soldered two capacitors for 10 microfarads and 10 nanofarads. So that the board with the buttons does not bend when pressed, I will put a cardboard pad under it. After assembly you can see what we got. When I press the top button, the tester turns on and the button lights up. When I press the bottom button, the backlight of the display lights up. Then I plug in the USB charger. It can be seen that the red LED is on while the battery is being charged. In complete darkness, charging looks like this. If the tester is turned on, only the light is visible. And this is what the backlight looks like. In the video, the numbers seem to be illegible and the display is very dimly lit. But I assure you, in reality, it is not so. The display is backlit very brightly and the numbers are easy to read. On the internet, many write that when working from a boost converter, the multimeter will fail. It seems like high frequency vibrations affect him, and he makes incorrect measurements. To refute this, I will show a comparison of two multimeters. Both multimeters show DC voltage exactly the same. The same goes for AC voltage. The tester also does the measurement of the resistance of resistors correctly. As you can see, upgrading the tester is not difficult but it adds a lot of useful features. If you have any other suggestions for improving this multimeter, then write them in the comments. That's all for today. Put like, subscribe to my channel. There will be many more interesting things and bye-bye.